Basically, to us, 3D rapid prototyping is actually another form of printing technology. The Centre for Fine Print Research has always looked at print in its broadest context. And to us, this is just printing in layers three-dimensionally rather than just dealing with a flat, planar surface. So for us, it's a logical progression. It's taken us several years to get there through sort of low-relief and low-relief ceramics into 3D printing technologies. But we see this as a new expansive area. We've done a lot of flat 2D digital printing. This is the obvious route next. For us, there are two fundamentals about working with artists. One is actually that um, that's our primary reason for, for, for existence, is that we have always worked with artists. We are artists who work with other artists. And our research is about how we can push technology for the visual arts. One of the things that um, is also important there is the fact we do a lot of work with industry as well. And artists for industry, for us, and industry are a test bed. We can actually do things with artists that industry wouldn't think to do and push the parameters of the technology. So we can not only push things forward, but also we can find out faults and problems or even approaches. Often it's the approach that the artist makes if we document it, which actually allows new development and avenues for the industry. Most of the 3D technology has been designed for prototyping, for producing a, a model for further development, whereas actually what we're trying to do is get the artist to work on a more finished piece, which then gets exhibited and finished and isn't a prototype, but actually is the object in itself, a sort of one-off sculptural piece. We have a kind of range of technology. At a simpler level we have, or to us at a simpler level, which is not necessarily the case, we have the Z-Corp rapid prototyping machines, which just lay layers of powder down and a glue, that, a binder that binds them together. Um, we have two of those. We have one that prints in colour and one that's just, just a straight, in essence, black and white, even though it only prints in white plaster. And we have the objects machine, which is a, a photopolymer deposition machine. And we have some very sophisticated, sort of um, delicate CNC milling machinery, which complements the, the, the main sets of rapid prototyping. Across the university, in actual fact, we have a very wide range of rapid prototyping facilities. Fundamentally, our research project from the Arts and Humanities Research Council is specifically looking at what artists can and can't do with the technology. And in a sense, one of the things that's very interesting about these technologies are the things you can manufacture that you couldn't do any other way. You can make impossible objects and structures just because of this layering process where you can make an object inside an object or shapes and forms that would be very difficult to create in any other method. One of the things that um, the centre wanted to look at wasn't just the production but from the capture right through to the manufacture. So we have scanning facilities, we have a Z-Corp scanner which you'll probably see later and um, we can actually capture objects and then make adjustments, put parts together and carry on designing. So it's that from conception to completion is the approach we need so that artists can come and they don't have to come part the way through the process, that they can come at the very start of the process. Hello, my name is David Hewson. I'm a researcher at the Centre for Fine Print Research in 3D Technologies. I'm going to describe the process of scanning a object uh, through to the 3D printing. I'm going to use a Z-Corp 3D scanner which is a handheld scanner so needs to have dots applied to the object to uh, determine its position in space. The object to be scanned sits on uh, a surface with locating dots and the scanner uses a camera to pick up the position in space of the object and scans over the object with a laser to determine the surface contours. The surface is picked up on the uh, Z-Corp software and generated on the computer. After the first scan the uh, model needs to be flipped 
to enable the underside to be captured. The scan software displays the, the scanned object in real time so that any part that's being missed can be completely covered. The scan data has been transferred to the Geomagic software which makes the building of the 3D model quite simple. The original scan is oriented and subsequent scans can be bought in and aligned. Here you can see scans done at two different points and the software allows the individual scans to be registered quite accurately. Just by roughly positioning the models and picking several points on them the software will allow you to register the individual scans. The final thing to do is just to level off the feet using the software so that the finished model will stand evenly. So it's quite a simple process, just a click of the mouse will fill in the area. The model is finished and is now ready to be inputted into the print software to transmit to the 3D printer, which orientates the model to give you the most efficient way of printing. The printing process itself is very simple and is as easy as sending a document to a standard 2D printer. This is a Z-Corp 510 colour printer, just being set up ready to print the scanned objects. The binder levels are checked, the model setup is checked and the 3D print button is hit. The printer works by ink jetting binder onto a powder bed. The software has sliced the model into layers and each layer is sent sequentially to the printer. As the first layer is printed the build bed drops and another layer of powder is spread across the bed. The unbound powder supports the bound area as it's being printed and the model is built up in the bed over time. The print process takes about four hours. When finished the feed bed is dropped down and the build bed raised and the model printed is excavated from the, the unbound powder. Here the excess powder has been carefully brushed away to reveal the models and the build bed. Unbound powder contained within the model and on the surface is then blown away The finished models are then ready for any further processing that may be required This is a 3D printed model of the unicorn produced from scan data having been infiltrated with wax to improve the surface finish. The two CAD generated models show how easy it is to scale from one drawing to, to several sizes of model. This model of a building shows the colour range that can be provided and the fine detail possible.
Hello, my name's Peter Walters. I'm going to be describing the process of creating a 3D model for 3D printing using the Rhinoceros computer-aided design software. Um, here you can see me working on a two-dimensional sketch in Rhino. Um, this is going to be developed into a 3D model um, which will be suitable for 3D printing on any of the 3D printers which we have in the studio here at the Centre for Fine Print Research. Here you can see I've created a revolved feature, um, that trumpet shape, and I'm now copying that um, using the copy rotate command uh, around the central axis to create an array of six trumpet shapes. It's quite easy to do. Uh, all the commands in Rhino are quite intuitive and um, it's an easy piece of software to get to grips with. It's used quite widely by industrial designers as well as artists and illustrators and sometimes for engineering applications too. Here you can see um, I'm going to be doing some more copying and uh, using the array function to create a pattern of these trumpet shapes around the surface of the sphere. Just zooming in there so I can see a bit more detail. One of the advantages of uh, working with 3D printing is it um, it's actually now possible to make um, three-dimensional forms which would be extremely difficult or even in some cases impossible to make by more traditional processes. So here you can see I've modelled an outer form which um, will fit around the internal form to the right. And so um, when we move the internal form across and nested inside the outer form you can see that uh, we have this uh, compound object with uh, one part fitting within the other. Um, that's a form which would be um, probably extremely difficult or time consuming to make by a traditional process um, and yet with 3D printing it's um, more or less a standard procedure to be able to produce forms this complex. and now I can show how easy it is to change the colour of the internal form um, because we have a facility for colour 3D printing um, we can prepare the uh, coloured model by editing the uh, colours of the different surfaces on the model using uh, Rhino and here's the completed 3D model ready for 3D printing the physical model is going to be built using the Object Geometries Photopolymer Rapid Prototyping System here you can see me preparing the uh, model to be sent to the 3D printer uh, which um, builds objects by depositing um, a liquid photopolymer material in layers. It prints one layer on top of the other. As it's being printed the photopolymer material which is light sensitive is in a liquid state but um, once the print head passes over ultraviolet lamps are, shon are shone on each layer as it's printed so the material solidifies. Here you can see the print is uh, progressing. Um, with each layer um, the object is getting bigger and um, there the ultraviolet light is um, solidifying the objects as they're being built. Um, the completed objects are now on the bed of the 3D printer. Once it's been removed from the bed of the 3D printer the object is placed inside a water jet machine which allows us to easily wash away the support structure from the outside and also from the inside of the 3D printed object in order that we can uh, see the complete object standing on its own. The Object Geometry 3D printing system is uh, a great way to produce uh, physical objects very accurately and a range of different materials are available for this system including both rigid and uh, soft materials which allows us to test out designs even containing mechanisms and functional working parts.